Since Metal Gear Solid 5 The Phantom Pain is being released this week, I figured I'd make a short video explaining my story about how I discovered Metal Gear Solid and why it's my favorite video game. This was a long time ago, I was about 13, it was circa 1999 and I finally got my, uh, my own PlayStation 1. I really wanted one because a lot of my friends did, but I didn't have much money at the time and I wasn't living in the best conditions. But I remember having a friend who was a neighbor down the street who gave me a big, like, CD case full of PlayStation 1 games and he said, you know, I barely play this anymore because I work two jobs. You can pick out whatever you like and keep it and just give me back the ones you don't want. And I said, okay, sure. So I borrowed the CD case and it had a bunch of titles in there like Tony Hawk Pro Skater 1 and 2, I think. And I remember it had a game called Tiny Tank, which was really funny. And then I came across these two discs with Metal Gear Solid on the title. And of course I didn't have the box, so I had no clue what kind of game it was. And as I was going through it, I popped it in the PS1, and the first thing I saw was a submarine. And at first, my first impression was, ah, submarines? I'm not a big submarine person. I don't even really know anything about the military. This looks really impressive, but I was bored pretty quick and I didn't even play it at first. Then I went back to it and gave it another try. And boy, am I glad that I tried again, because then, as after the first cutscene happened, and you, you're like a soldier who's going up to some building underwater, and he's hiding behind, you know, crates and things, and as I'm looking, the credits are rolling as you're playing, I'm like, whoa, I've never seen anything like this before, it looks like a movie or something. And you, you call on the radio, and there was so much dialogue, and the voice acting was top notch, and I was really impressed. But I didn't really know what the hell kind of game this was. I have never heard of a, a stealth game before, let alone, you know, a game where, you know, you do tactical espionage. I was only 13, I didn't know what the hell tactical espionage meant. If anything, I, it sounded something like out of a James Bond movie or Mission Impossible or something. And I have to admit, the first time I played this, holy sh did I suck. I sucked so bad at the stealth because I didn't realize that you were not supposed to get spotted. My first instinct was, uh oh, there's guards. I better try to kill them, otherwise they'll kill me. So I would, I would get spotted and the alarms would go off and I'd be like, oh sh and I had no clue what was going on. I just remember like alarms and panicking and uh, I would run towards the edge of the thing and he'd jump in the water to hide. And that was so cool, but I didn't know what the hell I was doing. I'd get spotted over and over and over. Huh? Who's that? It was all I ever heard. And guns blazing and dying. Game over, game over, game over. <laughs> Stop playing dumb. Snake! You'll pay for that. Snake! Ridiculous. Oh my god, did I suck at this game. So embarrassing. And I remember, like, the depending on how quickly you get in the elevator and how quickly you get up to the top where the heliport is, if you really suck at it, uh, Car Colonel Campbell would tell you, like, I guess, uh, age uh, got to you or something, he'd make a comment about, oh, I guess age is catching up with you, but if you do a good job, he'll be like, age hasn't slowed you down one bit. Which is interesting to me because I've, I've done some research and apparently Solid Snake is supposed to be like maybe 34 years old. I'm like, how is that old, age? I don't know, maybe he, because I remember he's supposed to be like a returning soldier of this special unit called Foxhound. Little did I know that Metal Gear Solid was a game based in a series that started on the original Nintendo Entertainment System, just called Metal Gear. So I've actually never even heard of Metal Gear because my Nintendo NES that I had as a kid, I never had that game. I had a lot of games, but that wasn't one of them. So I've never heard of Metal Gear or Metal Gear Solid until I played this one. And apparently, Metal Gear Solid is not the first of, it, of the series. So you're playing a continuous story, and when they talk about Gray Fox and Foxhound, Big Boss, I have no idea what they were talking about. I was playing around and, and looking at different things in the menu, like there was a thing called briefing where you get like a whole series of cutscenes, lots of them, where you get backstory about Metal Gear and why Solid Snake is here, what this mission's about. He's from Alaska, he was doing dog sled racing and they call him in to do this really special mission. I don't want to spoil it if you've never played the game, but the briefing was awesome because he's like in some kind of interrogation room, shirtless, looking pretty foxy. <laughs> no pun intended, fox. And uh, they're, they're like giving him injections and telling him what his objectives are in the mission. And 
each different tape you play would open up a branch of more tapes. And it, I don't know, it was like a good 90 minutes probably of all these tapes. And I remember because I didn't even have, I didn't have a VCR at home, I didn't have cable. This game was my only source of entertainment for a few months, if not almost a year. So I played the hell out of this game and played all those tapes and watched every cutscene over and over and over. And I got really good at this game played it back forwards there was two different endings and I played the demo theater I would listen to it while I do chores or I'd listen to the music while I did my homework this game was my best friend for a long time I never seen or played a game that looked like a movie and was so captivating I had little did I know that the story and the characters were so incredible everything about this game blew me away it was just it was like the first of its kind and I had no idea what I was, you know, what I, what was in store for me with this game. And the more I played it, the more I just got sucked in immediately because it was just unlike anything I've ever seen. I love the characters. I love the backstories. I love the drama. My God, there's such good drama in this game. You'd be surprised. Like you, you'd think a game. This is an old game, and it's all pixely now. It's kind of outdated. I think the graphics hold up though after all these years. This game came out in 1998, which is ridiculous. Holy crap, where did the time go? This game was my form of escapism. When I was 13, life was not going very well, and this game was a great way to get out of my current reality and escape in another one, and wow, this, this game just kind of saved me in a way. It helped me use my brain, it made me feel like I, when I was thinking and, and trying to, you know, de devise ways to get past guards and stuff, it just made me completely forget what was going on in my life and I get so sucked into it and I felt like I was a spy and I was <laughs> doing the missions and this game along with uh, Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time on, on my Nintendo 64 were my two favorite games at the time. But I gotta tell you, this game, I don't think I've played a game more than I've played Metal Gear Solid. I have no idea how many times I've played it. If I had to guess, probably close to 300 times and that's no bullshit. I've played it that many times. Like, you know, when you watch one of your favorite movies over and over and over, you memorize all the, all the words, you memorize all the dialogue. That's what I did with this game. So many memories attached to it. And as time went by, and eventually, years later, I get a PS2, played the demo for Metal Gear Solid 2 in around 2001. I was so excited, and I, I was very impressed with Metal Gear Solid 2. Uh, but I am one of those people that was a little disappointed with the bait-and-switch thing where you play Raiden for the majority of the game. I didn't like Raiden very much, and I'm not alone. Fortunately, uh, the game was still had amazing redeeming qualities. For whatever qualities wasn't right with the game, it didn't matter. I thought the game was badass regardless. And I think of all the... It's hard to pick a favorite, but Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater tends to be a lot of people's favorites for good reason. And it is one of my absolute favorites as well. And then, of course, you have Metal Gear Solid 4 on the PS3, which was just amazing. My god. I'm, when I played that game, I, I mean, the storylines in all the Metal Gear Solid games have, like, character development. You give a shit about the characters, but there'd be something that would happen or some kind of, you know, thought-provoking anti-war messages in the games. Amazing things that make you think, and then of course characters or something would go go down, I don't want to say, but yes, this game has made me cry. And Metal Gear Solid 4 I think made me cry the most. <laughs> I can go on and on, but I just wanted to express like how these games touched me, how they made my, I would say childhood, but I was a little, I was more like adolescent and teenagers. My young adult years, it helped me develop as a gamer helped me appreciate the art of game making, voice acting, and directing, and I've learned more about war and nuclear weapons and, and all kinds of things, like even just how weapons are made and how weapons work from Metal Gear Solid, because you could call people on the radio, like one of my favorite characters in Metal Gear Solid is actually Nastasha Romanenko, which is a character that most people don't even remember. She's a uh, Ukrainian military analyst with a cigarette hanging out of her mouth with a thick, thick accent. Pretty sexy, pretty awesome. And she would talk about any weapon you equip or any item, she would give you encyclopedic information about it. And it was so much fun to me. I, my, my brain was like a sponge and I loved like absorbing any information the game would provide. Even uh, Dr. Naomi, I loved Naomi. 
Even if you'd like select cigarettes in your inventory and call her, she would give you a lecture about what cigarettes do to the human body and what kind of cancer it can give you and all kinds of shit. It was so funny. And of course, my other favorite character was Mei Ling. Mei Ling is the Chinese American who would save your game and give you some kind of awesome proverb or quote. And every and she'd also give you advice on how to play the game. And she was just adorable, really intelligent, bubbly, and of course, uh, Snake was flirting with her all the time. I just didn't expect a world-class designer of military technology to be so cute. <laughs> You're just flattering me. Well, if you make it back in one piece, maybe I'll let you do a strip search on me. I'll hold you to that, Doctor. Snake's pretty uh, bold. You gotta love him. So anyway, I think one of the biggest uh, strengths in Metal Gear Solid is the characters. You've got Solid Snake, who's a special ops soldier who does this mission. is kind of against his will. He has an evil twin. There's cloning and all kinds of craziness. It's inspired, I would assume it's inspired by stories kind of like the X-Men, Terminator, movies like Rambo, Predator, Mission Impossible. It has a whole mishmash of sci-fi, action, thriller, psychological horror. It's just got a bit of everything in there. Solid Snake is kind of a tragic hero. He didn't really choose this destiny that he's thrown into, so he's basically doing it because he has no other choice. But he's a good guy, and he does want to do the right thing. We're sort of led to believe that Big Boss, who's more or less Snake's dad, is a bad guy, but we, we clearly get the impression he isn't. And as the game series progresses, you know damn well that Big Boss is not a bad guy. He just did bad things for the right reasons. That's what I love about the villains and the, the protagonists in these games, is that they all have motives, and each of their motives, if you think about it from their perspective, they're trying to basically save the world. Like in this guy's eyes, the only way to save the world is to blow up the powers that be, lead people to freedom. And then this other perspective is you can't take over the world by, you know, making the ultimate doomsday weapon. And that is no way to lead that's just going to lead to chaos and destruction. This whole game has got a ginormous anti-war message attached to it. That war is hell, we shouldn't be fighting each other, because today's allies could be tomorrow's enemies and vice versa. It's just, I've never had a game blow my mind as much as Metal Gear Solid. Years later, they released a remake of Metal Gear Solid called Metal Gear Solid Twin Snakes on the GameCube, and that was the reason I bought a GameCube. And it did not fail to impress. It's excellent. The gameplay is top notch. I love it. You can go in first person view to look around your surroundings. The camera has different dynamic movement whenever you lean up against things. The color scheme is kind of a, a dark bluish and green. It kind of reminds me of the Matrix. It has like a cold element. You feel isolated on this island and it's very foreboding. And I love the way, it, the feel of the game, the music, everything's perfect to me. And the Foxhound unit is just incredible. I think of all the, all of them, my favorites are Psycho Manus, Sniper Wolf. These are, these were like characters that were designed to be a simulation of terrorists, but they ended up being terrorists in the end. And these characters in each Metal Gear Solid game tends to have some kind of super special powers or really weird superhuman abilities. And that's why they're on this unit. And they're so interesting and they just get more and more cool the more games that come out. As the game series progressed through Metal Gear Solid 2, Metal Gear Solid 3, which is a prequel where you play Big Boss when he's younger, then Metal Gear Solid 4, and Solid Snake is doing advanced aging because of his uh, clone genes. He's aging faster than he normally would. And don't forget Peace Walker, which I never had a chance to play because originally it was only on the PSP, but I played it on the HD collection. Wow, that was a good game. And it's so much fun to play online, I cannot tell you. That's also another prequel. It, you play Big Boss, it's right around after the time of Metal Gear Solid 3, and the storyline just went, whoa! Like, it just went topsy-turvy at that point. But it makes sense still. It all still makes sense. But there's sometimes there's a few loopholes you have to rethink, but it, they're forgivable. You can't really get everything just right with a game this complex. And I noticed the storyline has gotten darker and darker and darker. Like, it was already pretty dark from the start, but it was kind of straightforward in Metal Gear Solid. And then they introduced things called the Patriots, which is like some kind of organization that basically controls everything about everything. And it just, it got ridiculously complex. Sometimes it kind of hurts your head when you're trying to like talk about it or figure things out. But it didn't matter because the game was so much fun 
and the more you played it, the more you understood the, the things going on. And I've played the hell out of pretty much every Metal Gear Solid game, but to this day, I still have to watch those recap videos to remember what the hell happened in the previous titles, or recap how is this character connected to that character, because it's it's almost as difficult and complicated as Game of Thrones. Who, ha who is able to remember every family of every kingdom and every realm and province? I know I can't. At this point, it doesn't matter. I am still so excited for Metal Gear Solid V Phantom Pain. The, the most recent title was Metal Gear Solid V Ground Zeroes, which is, eh, I gotta admit, as awesome as the graphics are and the story is pretty badass, it was short but sweet, but it's in a different formula that I'm kind of hoping they go back to the original Metal Gear form formula. It felt more like I was playing a SOCOM game. The controls were totally different. Very cool graphics, very cool technology because it takes place in the 70s. So the technology is lower tech and yet it's still pretty high tech. And I have to admit, the storyline has gotten so dark that it's disturbing. You're like, whoa, Hideo Kojima, the director, it's like, you're really going like full force with the storyline now. I've literally avoided almost all the Twitter feeds. I've avoided the trailers because I don't want spoilers and I know you don't either. So I'm not gonna speak anymore about the game. It's coming out in just a few days. By the time you watch this video, it's probably gonna be out and I've already ordered my copy, the collector's edition. So we're gonna find out how awesome it is. But according to my friends, they tell me very discreetly that the reviews are like a perfect score, 10 out of 10. And this is gonna be the last title in the Metal Gear Solid series and it's gonna be pretty incredible. And I'm so excited and I can't wait to play it. So I just thought I'd recap and talk a little bit about it. And I'll probably make another video that's more detailed, but I had to do this video in a short amount of time and I figured it'd just be fun to talk about it a little bit to express my excitement for the new title coming up. I can't wait, and I'm sure you can't either. And if you've never played Metal Gear Solid, I highly recommend it. You can buy the first game in the PlayStation Store. Uh, you can get used copies. They're, they tend to, they're not that rare, and they're, they're pretty cheap. But you could also try uh, the GameCube version, which is basically the exact same game, it's just a little more, um, better graphics, better gameplay. The dialogue has changed very minimally, but it's pretty good. But my favorite is still the original PlayStation 1 title. And you go from there and play the other games if you enjoyed it, and you won't regret it. I got some friends that have only just started playing them, and they love them, and they're just so incredible. I highly recommend it if you want a good story, good action, incredible gameplay, the most innovative plot you've ever done. And multiple endings, like it's very, it's just top notch. It is my favorite series ever made. So, give it a try sometime. Thanks for watching. Uh huh? Snake, you're not using a stereo TV? Ugh. It can't be. A mono TV. <clears throat> well, Colonel, there's nothing we can do about it. I guess you're right. Snake, don't worry about it. There's more to being a good person than just having a stereo television. You can do it just the way you are. Mono TV. Hell with you.